Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton, here with Brandon. This is the 100th episode of Clock Talk on this channel. We've been doing this every other week, pretty much, for over four years now, which is kind of nuts. But we're here, and episode 100 is going to be a big one because there's a lot to talk about. We pushed this back a few days. It was, this was supposed to come out on Thursday, and hopefully it's Sunday when this is actually going out because Bushy Road English had a product stream Thursday night and announced a lot of things that we need to talk about because there is a ton here. So we're going to start with what everyone is talking about, and that is the restriction list changes. Four sets got changes. There were six total changes. The most important one, Avatar, the Sokka is banned. The Sokka that enabled all of those extra attacks at all levels of the game is not playable in English anymore when this goes into effect on August 9th, which, importantly, is before the France Regional. So Sokka is banned for every official competition, every officially sanctioned competition um, going forward, because France is the next one on the schedule. It's the last one in BSF. So Sokka's banned. Chainsaw Man, two changes. One, the Aki level three is limited to two. And the second restriction is the Himeno Stoxel combo and the Himeno bomb that uh, bonds to the Easy Revenge event. Those are on a choose one of two. So Aki's limited to two, and you cannot play the Stoxel combo with the bomb bonder. On the Hollow Live side of things, two changes as well. Similar ish changes. Gura limited to two. Also, the Mio double drop search is now on a choose list with the Luna 3-2, which is one of the key players in most eight standby lists. The other restriction list change that they didn't really talk about too much, um, and it hasn't really been advertised as much, talked about, is that the back row Toka from the OG DAL package that was so toxic a few years ago has been unrestricted. It has been removed from Data Live's choose list. We'll get into that in a little more detail in a minute. But first, Brandon. Massive changes. More changes than I expected, for sure. I thought at most we were going to get maybe a Sokka ban. I wasn't sold that we were going to get that. And then Aki to two, Gura to two. I thought that was going to be it if we got if we got bans at all. So this is a longer restriction list than I expected. Is this in line with what you expected, or are you surprised by the number of changes? Just about what I expected. The only one that really throws me for the loop is the Luna. Because uh, we hadn't really seen 8 standby Hollow Live get as many results as expected to be able to warrant a ban, especially with other things that have been banned and ha or things that haven't been banned. Um, like, for example, the Overlord list got a lot more tops than 8 Standby Hollow Live. Yeah, I think that that one definitely is surprising. Um, 8 Standby had 14 tops, whereas Overlord had 19. Um, the 8 Standby list also was a lot more diverse than the Overlo Overlord list. Like, every Overlord list that topped was on Ainz, whereas the 8 Standby Hollow Live stuff is a lot more eclectic. You see a lot more different stuff in those lists. So yeah, that one definitely, I think that is the most surprising move on the restriction list. I don't think anyone's really mad about it though, because like what we'll start here with hollow life. I don't think it really affects the list very much. Like it's one of the most powerful cards ever printed in English. I would argue drop search on play drop search on death and not only top check two, but potentially mill those two and or rearrange like extremely powerful piece i know in the gura list in particular and the eight standby list obviously also very powerful because like you're running standby triggers like you get to you know get closer to your triggers it's a whole thing 
So if you were going to try to bring eight standby down a peg without hitting it very hard or making the deck, you know, significantly different, this restriction does make sense, but you're right. Not a ton of hollow live eight standby at the top tables. Like it's there. It's one of the most present archetypes for sure. It's a thing that you have to play around. It's a thing you have to, it's a matchup you should be prepared for. Yeah, I just for me, yeah, for for me, I would expect to see Overlord before I see this. Sticking with Hall Life for a second, Gura to two. As the channel's resident Gura player, this was the ban I expected, and this is going to affect the amount of Gura that you see in the fall. However, I don't think it affects how good Gura is all that much. The fixing in the Caligura list is very good. In my testing, I've not really had too much of an issue getting both of my Guras. So I think you can, you know, tech in some more level 3 stuff, keep your soul trigger count high, maybe you put in like a Kali or um, one of the Aquas or the Noel. Like, you just throw in another copy of, you know, or two of, you know, whatever other finishing piece you like, so that if you don't get both Guras, you still have a formidable board. And I don't think that really, like, I don't think that disrupts it too much. It definitely brings down the consistency, for sure, but it forces you as the Gura player to be, like, 5 to 10% better as a player in the game. And I think that, like, the best Gura players are going to be able to survive that just fine. So, like, if you were already doing well with Gura, you just change your fixing a little bit. You fix more aggressively for the Gura specifically to make sure you have them. And, like, pay attention to when it gets triggered and all that. But I don't think that this nukes the deck by any means. Like, it's going to affect its representation. People will drop this list. But I think that the people who stay on it very likely will be rewarded for their patience. Because Gura is still extremely powerful. You don't go for triple Gura in the Kali Gura list. I do think Ozki Gura is a lot more affected by this. Because in Ozki, you're not pushing damage in the mid game because you're slamming standby. You're not slamming 1k1s. You just don't have as many soul icons on the board. So you're just not pushing as much soul in the mid game. Gura, Kali Gura's game plan is chill at level two because you're slamming 1k1s, push your opponent with, you know, the 30 plus soul triggers you're running, get them into three first, you hang out at level two, heal down to two, two or whatever, and their top end doesn't close you because one, you rushed them. Like they didn't get that extra turn to set up their stuff that they would normally get. And you're just too far out for them to really close, because other than Gura, there's not a whole lot that closes from early level 2 with any kind of consistency. So that allows you as the Gura player to, when they've expended their you know level 3 turn, and they've pushed you somewhere into early, maybe mid-level 3, you just get to go double Gura and close from 3-0 with consistency. So you only need two Guras. The triple Gura isn't what you're going for, unless the game is super, you know, out of hand one way or the other. So in the vast majority of games, you're not pursuing Triple Gura. I don't think this... It it definitely affects Gura. I'm not going to say it doesn't affect Gura at all. But it definitely isn't what... It definitely isn't the the kind of restriction that's going to make Gura go away completely. Which I think is reasonable. Like, I am much more in favor of these light touches that, you know, bring a deck down in its consistency, maybe make a deck a little bit less powerful, but that still allow the archetype to be played. That is not what happened to Chainsaw Man. I think you and I agree, Brandon, that, like, the traditional Stock Soul Bar Chainsaw Man list is dead. Are, are we in agreement on that? It is definitely a lot more difficult to make a little thing happen. Can, are, is, there, is it probably still going to exist in some fashion? Yes. Is it going to have the same kind of consistency that it did before? Absolutely not. Yeah, because, well, so if you try to play Stock Soul Bar, you don't get to play the thing that bonds to your 1-1. You don't get to play one of your best zeros. 
and you only have two copies of your Aki. And Aki's, like, Aki's strength is, well, one of its biggest strengths, I would argue, is that it's really easy to triple. Like, because you just go get it, right? Because you literally get to salvage it when you play the other Aki. So it's very easy to fix for the Akis into your hand. And it only takes six stock to get the whole Aki board together. Like, it's a very efficient top end for what you get. So now, not only are you only getting two Akis, you're not getting to use the Stock Soul combo, which is an excellent combo. It's the best plus in combo in the set. Or, if you do want to use that, you don't get to use the thing that goes to get your easy revenges, which make your Akis, you know, actually pop off. Like, I think the choice, if you are going to stick with the Aki, is you have to move off the Himeno combo. I think you have to move off the Sock Soul. I think the bombs are too important. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. I, I don't think that this deck is going to make it. I don't think this deck survives this. Um, I think that Aki, as a top end, doesn't survive this. I don't think it has the ceiling now. You know, because now you're getting, you know, two lanes of better Icy Tail. And yeah, like, it's free, but it's still, you know, the ceiling is not there at this point, when you only have two copies of the Aki. So, like, there are off finishers in the set, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but, like, it's just... And then, on top of that, you don't get either the best plus in combo in the set or the thing that enables your 1-1 events. Like, I just don't see it. And this is coming from someone who does not hate Chainsaw Man. Like, I don't... Like, I don't... I'm, I'm not... It, it brings me no joy to see Chainsaw Man get nuked like this. Like... I understand hitting Aki to two. I don't understand just like shooting the whole deck out of the sky. That that feels like a lot. That feels like a lot to me. I don't know. So like, what do you do if you're on Chainsaw Man? Like if you, Brandon, were planning on playing Chainsaw Man this fall, what are you doing? Are you, are you trying to make things work still with the Aki or are you just moving off of it completely? Are you moving out of the set completely? Because there is other stuff you can do with Chainsaw Man that's, like, playable, but it's definitely not as good as this old list. No, no, you're definitely... I think you're definitely pivoting off of it. You're probably playing the six choice two salvage lists that we've seen yeah, floating around. I agree. Um, I'm, I suspect that's probably the backup plan if you're running this list at all. Um, although, you're, if you're looking to play for more meta contenders, you probably are switching off of this set entirely, but... Yeah, and we'll get into, um, you know, we're, we're going to talk more about, like, the ban list as a whole in just a moment. But yeah, no, I, I am in agreement. I am in agreement. Chainsaw Man is really, really hurt by this, and I don't think it can really recover. Another deck that may never recover is Avatar. We talked about how Sokka finally got hit. Um, it needed to be. This is the one change on this list where I'm like, absolutely, yes, that needed to happen. Because this was a design mistake. Sokka was a mistake. They did not put the text on the card that needed to be on the card for Sokka to be a normal Weiss card. Like, they did not intend for it to be used the way that it was used. Players found a way to, you know, break the card, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to find interactions. Like, we're card players, right? That's, that, that's what happens. And when that sort of thing happens... The company has to step in and say, we messed up on this one. We're, we're, we're not going to let you use this card anymore. The company didn't completely go Mia Culpa on it, which I wouldn't really have expected it. But the fact that they did ban it, despite the fact that Avatar, like, in terms of results, was not the most dominant deck in the format or anything like that. Like, it was obviously extremely powerful. Like, don't get me wrong. And, like, there's a reason everyone wanted it. Well, almost everyone wanted it hit. But Avatar, in terms of Results, it only had the third highest number of tops among sets. So, like, you know, there was an argument, and I was concerned that Bushiro was going to make this argument, that Avatar just wasn't having enough success. But the groundswell of frustration with this archetype and with this card ultimately carries it out of the meta. And I, I think it's a good decision. As much as I don't love bans, like, we've talked about this ad nauseum, that I don't love bans, but this is why a ban list does need to exist at this point because Bush Road has now printed at least two cards that were straight up design mistakes. 
that got absolutely abused and made really, really problematic lists that made the format much, much worse. Obviously, the other one being the uh, the level one from Hollow Live. But yeah, so are you also on board with this? I, I think we're on the same page on this one as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it needed to happen. Um, it it because essentially it was playing for effects at a much cheaper cost than what it was supposed to be able to do for those kinds of effects. So like, it makes sense that this ended up getting banned um, in the way that it did. Um, is Avatar out of the running? It changes definitely what you're playing. Like Avatar has a lot of different pieces, and a lot of the thing flows really, really well. It can do a lot of good things. Uh, it definitely drops it from the tier in which it was, and I think it requires a little bit more of a change off of the things that it was on. So yeah, if you were playing a fair Avatar deck that ran Sokka, what you are losing is an on play and on death. Pay one clock self, summon Ricky. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't love summon Rickies personally. Like obviously Sokka. Sokka's really good because it's the double, and obviously like the combo enabler and all that. All that. Like uh, setting aside the combo enabling stuff. If if Avatar if Sokka had been printed with the text that it should have been printed with, which basically you know would have shut down any like attack phase shenanigans, it would have just been. An on play summon Ricky, on death summon Ricky. Which, you know, double Ricky. It's powerful in the same way as Mio is, obviously not quite as powerful, both because it's a summon Ricky specifically um, does a plus to hand, which is obviously, you know, a, a very useful thing to be able to plus to hand as opposed to directly to board, but also doesn't have like the top check and all that. So it's like it, it's in the same family of cards as Mio. It's obviously not as powerful, again, without the attack step shenanigans. Avatar does have another Ricky. It is ultimately a less good Ricky because it only procs on play, and it is a salvage Ricky. It's a look at three, clock from those three, mill the rest, pay and pay one, salvage Ricky. It's in red. So, like, you have a Ricky still, but it's obviously, like, not as good of a Ricky. Um, and obviously, like, the on-death effect for the Sokka me means it's, you know, probably easier to like loop that bar combo at one things like that so like losing Sokka is rough if you are a fair avatar deck but i also don't think that it like nukes those from where they were like if you were playing a normal avatar deck that didn't do the attack phase stuff with Sokka, this definitely affects you but i don't think it really bumps your deck down more than maybe half a tier because you already weren't super high on the tier list like the best fair avatar list was like a bottom of B tier, in my opinion. Um, I think there's definitely stuff you can play in Avatar. I think you definitely still have like decks. Is it going to be top of the meta decks? No, it's always going to be on the outside looking in at this point. So those are the restrictions on the update list. There's also one other update. The Toka from Data Live unrestricted, removed from that choose one of three list. So let's actually have a look now at the full restriction list and go from there. We'll start just by talking about DAO. So because the Toka has been removed, the choose one list for DAO is now the Toka Brainstorm and the 1-1 one, one Yoshino um, that you know runs in front of things. It's the uh, anti-change bomb that runs in front of a target at the beginning of their attack phase. Uh, stand and swap is the term that you'll hear people use for it. And obviously the Kurami is limited to two. I think you could just remove the DAO restrictions entirely. I understand why they're being a little cautious, because DAO was really bad for the meta when it was the only deck that mattered for a very long time. So I understand the concerns with not wanting that to happen again. But I don't think that, you know, the the, the DAO standby game in particular with the two twos, like, you, you have a bunch of stuff in this meta now that can clear those 2 twos. Like, the defensive scry on the 2 two is nowhere near as dangerous as it used to be. Like, we have something pretty similar in Spy Family at this point. It's in, you know, it, it's a similar-ish effect. And that deck is not dominant. It's good, but it's not dominant. I think Data Live would be in kind of the same window. It also does not push a ton of damage in the mid-game, right? Because it's not slamming 1k1s. The goal is obviously to get a bunch of 2-2s down, but we have a bunch of stuff in the meta now 
like a ton of striker profiles that can deal with big two twos. You know, we have level two killers, not to mention like the Adachis that we used to have. So like, I feel like there are more options now to deal with Dal than there were when Dal first happened, where you could probably just remove this from the list entirely. But I'm happy to see that they're at least doing something to unrestrict Dal, even in like a little sense, just to kind of test the waters a little bit. Dalite standby is not coming back in a huge way until certainly they unban Kurami, which will happen someday, I imagine. Until Kurami is completely unbanned, the 8 standby list is never coming all the way back. But I also think that these other enablers, um, the Toka Brainstorm and the Oshino, like, I don't, I don't, if you unbanned the whole thing, I don't think that would be a problem. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see Dal being more than high B, low A, if the 8 standby list came out. Like, I don't see, I, I see it being playable, but not dominant at all. Fair. Um, I, for me, it's, I don't expect to see it unbanned, honestly, realistically ever, only just because I don't have the same confidence in Bushy Road that you do. That's fair. Coming from someone who does not have a lot of confidence in Bushy Road, you're not wrong. Um, because I, I don't actually. It should be unbanned someday. How about that? It should, as the game progresses and the cards will get better because that's what happens in card games. Eventually, Kurami is not going to be banned. It shouldn't be banned. But, no, you're right. Bushy Road may just leave it on the ban list forever. Uh, speaking of things that they've just left on the ban list forever, Kagi is still banned for reasons. I don't even know what to say at this point. Like, there's conversation about how, like, there's, like, a mandate from above at this point. Like, there is someone at Bushy Road who is, like, keep this thing banned. Don't know how true that is. But, like, yikes. I mean, it's... It, I, I actually think it's very unlikely to be true. Only just because it just got unbanned in JP. Like, it should... It should be unbanned probably in the next ban wave. I just... For whatever reason... It didn't make the cut this time around. Kaguya did nothing in Springfest. Like, Kaguya's not a bad deck, but you know how many events Kaguya topped in Springfest? None. Zero. Zero. I don't know if unbanning these cards would change that. Like, guys... Come on! Why is Kagi is still on this list? It didn't make sense when it was put on the list. It sure as all get out does not make any more sense now. This is Kagiya has been treated so poorly by Ian Bushy Road. It's absurd that Kagiya is still here. But yeah, um, those are probably the biggest highlights from this, uh, as far as where I sit. Quince probably not changing anytime soon. Like, Quince is very good in the meta, but it's not elite. Um, they really wanted to take away at least some of the consistency pieces, um, as well as its big defensive counter in the charm event. So, makes sense that Quince isn't going anywhere based on, you know, what Bushy Road is seeing. Um, Alice to two, that, you know, that obviously just nuked the whole deck, which is unfortunate, but Alice... This is one of those bands I kind of like after the fact begrudgingly recognize was probably good for the game just because there were so many sets that couldn't deal with Alice very effectively. Um, as much as there are options to deal with big level twos, and I think that, you know, those should have been seeing those cards should have been seeing more play in more decks. Um, Alice to two does make sense as much as it does just kind of take the deck out of play entirely. And then SDS... Escador is basically non-existent. Um, but if you put the Gale Thunder back into play, the Escador probably becomes existent again. And I don't know if Bushiroad wants Escador to be powerful the way that it was when it had you know, all, all the text on the Gale Thunder that like made the Escador really pop off. So that'll probably stick around. And then Slime... I think the slime ban, if you know, for Bushiroad's goal of trying to you know cut, kind of cut slime down to size. 
I think the the Shuna Shizu choose one has accomplished that for them because slime has been very present, but it has not been dominant. Although that obviously could change now that we have new bands, right? So like the three best sets in the meta, and I would say four of at least the top five decks have been hit. I think it's hard to hard to imagine that slime uh, doesn't make a return to top tier level relevance here in the fall season. And we're going to get more into that um, in two weeks when we do our big uh, BSF 2024 recap show where we talk about all of the things that went down in BSF. We talk about all the data like Avis and Alexander have gone to work and collected a whole bunch of numbers and I've been parsing through spreadsheets and organizing it so that we have, you know, uh, we have some interesting things to talk about. There are some very interesting things to talk about. So we will get to those uh, specifically when we do the recap show two weeks from now. But that's, I think, it for ban list conversations. So let's move on to the other stuff that they announced on the stream. And we'll start with BCS 2024. Bushiro giving us a real schedule three months in advance. Love to see it. More of this, please. The regional schedule starts in October in Sacramento, California, and it will run through March. Uh, the, la the latest date that I've seen is in Chile, which is after the Pasadena, California regional in late March. So uh, that is this is the end of the season is going to run around the end of March. Worlds will be in May 2025. They've not explicitly said Japan yet. Uh, not that I've seen. So keeping an ear to the ground on that one. Not sure if that is going to change, but they haven't explicitly said World Finals are in Japan yet that I have heard or seen. If they have and I missed it, by all means, leave a comment and let us know. But top three in each regional get their invite. Uh, winner gets a paid trip. That has not changed. Prizes. Uh, Top Cut will get a premium PR pack and an Ayakashi Triangle playmat. The top four will get an exclusive PR. Everybody will get a PR pack that is similar to the PR pack for Top 8, except it won't have like the special stamp. Like That's the difference between those two packs. You're also going to get a Shioko tote bag, which is kind of neat. Um, so no playmats for... Uh, participation in BCS this year, but you do potentially get a neat tote bag like you subscribed to a magazine in 2007. Free Fight PR is going to be the Bang Dream 2 Soul. Hey now, I like that tote bag. I like it too. I like it too. I'm always going to make fun of tote bags just because like as an English major, like, and someone who like actually like read like magazines uh, at one point, like, The Atlantic and New Yorker and things like that, like, unironically, like, the number of times you get barraged with, uh, you know, if you subscribe, you get a free tote bag. It's like, if I subscribed to all of you, I would have ten tote bags. Um, so, yeah, no, I do like the tote. The tote, the, it's cute. Anything with Shioko on it, I'm immediately on board. Like, more Shioko merch is definitely good, because I think Shioko's a great mascot. Also, uh, for BCS... Um, the restriction on new products reduced to only one week after things come out, not two. So worth noting, um, and you know, you can compare the release schedule to event schedules, etc. but, um, new stuff will be playable sooner, which means that, um, it's probably a good thing all told that you're going to be able to play your stuff as soon as you get it, as opposed to having to wait for two weeks. I feel like that's a good decision. Also, shop challenge is happening. The buy card has not changed. You win, you get a buy card that you can use at a regional event, which definitely valuable. There are PRs. Uh, the PR is Ruby, I think. So definitely the, probably the most important, probably the most important event on most people's competitive calendars, the next important event on people's competitive calendars. The, that will be starting, I think they're going to start shop challenges potentially in September. Um, 
So just keep an eye out, figure out when your local shops are doing those. Next item on the agenda, a change that we expected uh, because they talked about it for a long time, but it's officially coming to English. Changes to booster packs and boxes and cases. Big difference is your packs will be losing one common. They'll go from nine cards to eight cards. They will not change in price. A little bit annoying if you're only opening prize packs, I guess. But if you're opening a case, you are going to lose 288 commons that you already had potentially a dozen or more copies of. The number of boxes is changing from, uh, from 18 to 24, but the number of packs in that case is not changing. So you're just losing one common from each of those packs. A box now has 12 packs instead of 16. That's all going to start with Freerin when it gets released. Oh, by the way, we got Freerin. Congratulations to those of you who uh, saw that at, uh, I believe it was Anime Expo, that Freerin basically kind of got soft announced there uh, on accident, on purpose, whatever. But... Yeah, so free run is the first set that will have these new changes. Good changes overall. Um, we have it on reasonable authority. Reasonable authority being Shizu Cats and Kilowatt, two guys that uh, we definitely trust with this kind of analysis. That the the amount of double R's uh, in a case should not change. Shizu Cats also adding that. Um, while common bulk specifically will be reduced, it also potentially could give more foils per case. So I think overall, generally positive changes. Like again, like if you, if, if the only packs you open are prize packs, like you're getting a little bit less out of your prize packs. But if you are opening a lot of sealed product, this is certainly a win. The only thing you're losing is 300 cards that you were just going to shove in a box. So I, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that's probably a positive change long term. Uh, this is something we saw coming for a while now. We saw this change happen in JP, and so not surprised to see it happen in English as well. And then finally, EN release schedule. We have a couple updates. Free Run has been announced with a date, November 22nd. Also announced, Macross Delta, December 13th. Both of those coming to English Weiss. Free Run will be a trial deck and a booster pack, but Cross Delta, just a premium booster. But those will come out end of 2024, and I believe that should wrap up our 2024 release schedule. 2025, we'll see Nika, Goddess of Victory, as was announced earlier. So yeah, uh, Free Run is coming to English, not unexpected at all. Um, across a pleasant surprise for a lot of people, I think. Um, I wasn't necessarily expecting it, but I know a lot of people are very happy to see it. So, uh, congratulations to you if you were waiting for Macross Delta. You will be able to purchase that in December. And I believe that is all we've got. This was basically like a comprehensive like recap of all the things from the product stream, as well as like talking about it in like an analytical way to a certain extent. Uh, in two weeks, the big Spring Fest recap. We are going to go over um, a whole spreadsheet's worth of data. I've already got like graphics in the works. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good video. We're gonna talk at length about what was good, what wasn't good, what the ban list does to the things that were good, and what things might be kind of working their way up now. What are the new top tier things? Uh, in a post-ban world. A lot of opinions in that video, but also a lot of data as well. So it's going to be a good one. We'll see you for that in, uh, we'll call it two weeks. It'll be a week from Thursday. I don't think there's a new video this week, though, in between, because we are both in the middle of our like busy summer schedules, so I don't think there's going to be anything this week. There might be like a Weiss 102 or something, but the next long video you get from us should be the BSF recap a week from Thursday. Until then, thank you so much for joining us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one. We'll see you then.